Welcome to another session of For University. I am your host Kirsten at Astro Kirsten and today we're going to be talking about do we need a manager? We're going to have a candid conversation with a fabulous person who's come along to talk about all things managerial with TikTok. Because now you're starting to make content, getting views, you're seeing other creators getting brand deals. What do you need to do to get a manager and do you need one? So. We have All Right Hey here to come and talk to us to tell us a bit of a candid conversation on the infamous tips and tricks on how to get a manager and how to work with a manager. So yeah. thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So excited to be here. So I'd like to start off by telling us what's been your TikTok journey so far? Well, TikTok for me started uh, just before the pandemic hit and I actually did an event up in Queensland with Rory Eliza who's got millions of followers on TikTok and she actually convinced me to start one. I didn't want to start one. I was like, no, TikTok, probably not for me. Like, <laughs> just gonna leave it to the kids, you know, let them do what they do. And, you know, she was saying all oh, these ridiculous trends were going off and I was like, this is so not me, but let me give it a go. And then I gave it a go and I don't know, it went pretty well. Like people watched my videos, it was all good. And then there was a trend to like one of Katy Perry's songs where it was like, you wore a blanket and then you spun around and the blanket became a dress. It was like a very, very long time ago. This is way back in 2019. Mm -hmm. And I did that trend with a wedding dress because I used to do drag. And so I had this wedding dress, fabulous wedding dress, had it up and everybody just thought it was like a pillow or a doona cover. Mm -hmm. And then as I spun, it came out and it was a wedding dress. And that went super viral. And that's kind of where it all kicked off. And then, yeah, it's just kind of grown from there, I guess. And they gave me a blue tick really early. Thank you, TikTok, for giving me <laughs> a verified blue tick really early. So that drove a lot of traffic to my mm. page as well because people were like, you have 15,000 followers, but you're verified. Who are you? So <laughs> that helped as well. <laughs> and at what point did you think, oh, maybe I should get a manager so I'd get someone to help me think about my creative journey and getting other opportunities outside of TikTok? Well, at this point, I actually already had a manager because I've been doing social media for many, many years. So before TikTok, I was I actually started back on YouTube way back in the day. And it was then that my manager reached out to me and said, hey, like we should get together, we should have a chat. And I think I see a lot of potential in you and what you're doing. So I like have already had a manager and had a huge career before TikTok was even a thing. I'm so glad I got on TikTok though, because now, um, post pandemic, I guess, like TikTok is the the main kind of social media that everybody's on, everybody's flocking to, it's all mm. kind of growing. And I'm glad I got in when I did, because I feel like if I tried to get in now, it was like, it might be not much the same. Overwhelming, yeah, maybe. like much more saturated mm. and whatnot, but um, harder to maybe find a niche or something like that. But I'm very lucky that I kind of already had the manager in my pocket and helping me out for years before I started TikTok. So what does the manager do for you? How does that relationship work? Well, it's very strange because although you hear the term manager, it's almost like we're working together. So it's not mm. like a manager is your boss. Like it's more that you work collaboratively together to, um, how do I put this? I guess for me, it's really good because a lot of the things that I could be doing by myself and would make the workload a lot harder, I can kind of offload to somebody else and, <laughs> and they can sort that out. So it's also very hard when you are getting a lot of opportunities, a lot of things and like, you know, doing things like we're doing here today, live streaming on TikTok. Like I'm here right now, but you know, there are a million other jobs that I also need to be doing right now because this is my full-time career. Mm. Well, it's great because I've got a team of people who can help that. And when we say manager as well, like we may not mean one single person mm -hmm. um, in terms of literally like having a manager, a manager or a management company. Um, there's usually a whole team of people behind that. So originally I did start with just a manager, but because the workload has grown and my manager has also taken on other talent from across social media, now we need a whole team with managers, assistants, podcast mem managers and assistants. And there are there's a, a whole team behind me now. So it's really amazing. It, to someone who doesn't have a manager or anything like that, it seems really overwhelming mm -hmm. to me. So how do you, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better word, manage the management <laughs> to make it work for you? Well, just the same as any other job. Like at the end of the day, this is a job. This is a career and this is my full-time 
thing. So I have to treat it like a job. We have weekly week meetings, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three times a week, depending on how busy we are. We've got agendas and Google Docs that we share with each other so that every, we know everybody's like doing what they need to be doing and it's a really well-oiled machine. And doing everything myself would be the overwhelming part. Mm. So this isn't overwhelming at all. It actually makes my life so much easier by having this team of people behind me who can help facilitate X, Y, Z. Yeah. Um, so although it may sound overwhelming, it actually makes life way less overwhelming. I mean, life is still overwhelming. Of course. But, <laughs> but uh, it just makes it a lot easier. Awesome, yeah. So when you have opportunities come through and maybe you want to suggest something or your managerial team suggests something, you're like, mm, maybe not. Mm -hmm. How do those conversations work and how does that creative uh, those juices flow to be like, oh, maybe I don't want to go in this direction. Let's go more in this direction. Well, the good thing is if you have a good manager and a great team that they know that whatever you say kind of is what's going to happen. Mm. So if they come to me and say, hey, would you like to work with this brand? And I say, no, that's kind of like the end of the story because I know what's going to be best for me. I know who I want to align myself with. And now it's actually much better. It took a while to get there. I'll talk about that in a second. But now it's much better because we, as I said, we're a well-oiled machine and they know. Like if someone reaches out to us or reaches out to me and says, hey, do you want to work with the, you know, do you want to work together? Mm. And my management can see that that's not going to work. Like then they might not even tell me about it at yeah. all because <laughs> we know each other and that works really well. But it has taken a long time to get there. It's just one of those things that from working together, you will just get to know each other and you'll get to know what each how each person works and what each person likes and how it's all going to come together. So it is just one of those things that kind of um, works. But there are still times where they'll say, hey, would you like to work with this company? And I'll say, yes, yeah, sure. Or I'll say, no, thanks. Mm. And there are other times as well where we start working with a company and then it doesn't go the way that I thought it was going to go. Yeah. And you just have to kind of just not, uh, I guess, like, I want to say cave in, but basically, mm. you know, you know there Stop yeah, there are there, yeah, yeah, there are huge, huge brands that I've worked with, which it just comes from me. Like if it, if the brief or the concept goes a totally different way to the way I thought, and I thought I think to myself, mm, my audience might not like this, mm. or this isn't exactly what I thought we were going to be doing with this concept. There have been times where I've told huge brands, sorry, this isn't going to work, and. Again, that's a good thing about having a management team is you go, you deal with it. <laughs> that was going to be my next question, actually, because as a small creator, I'm like, oh, there might be a brand that comes through. And I'm like, yeah, love your brand, but probably isn't best for my audience. Mm. Um, saying no is hard. Mm -hmm. So do you have that luxury with a management team that you can just be like, okay, guys, can you deal with this, please? Yes. So, yeah, literally, <laughs> to put it bluntly, yes, I do. Like, I, I just forward the email. So the way that it works for me is it works different for everybody. Everybody has different ways to work with their management. But for me, um, I get all emails sent to me first and then I forward on the ones that I either want them to reply to or want them to decline on behalf of me. And that way, that's just the way that it works for me personally, is that I get everything first. And then if I see something I want to work on, I'll forward it and be like, let's, let's, make, it let's make it happen. Yeah. And of course, the opposite of that is I go politely decline for me because, mm. yeah. It's so hard to say no sometimes because, like, you feel like you need to give a reason, but then it's just like, I don't need to actually give a reason. Yeah, well, I mean, for me, it's great because I'm genuinely so busy that I can just say I'm too busy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think as well, one thing that I that I've really struggled with is I used to do a lot of things for contra or for free, like mm. as in, like you, know, you get the product yeah. and it's the payment is you make the video. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. the, the brand would like send out um, something for free and then I would make a video on it. Mm. And I remember it just got like too much because um, there were too many brands that I had to like <laughs> give shout outs to because I was loving all the free stuff. Mm. But the other thing as well is that, that that can really damage the industry because if a brand is sending me a free product and um, I'm promoting it for free, basically, then they're going to be quite shocked when other people want to charge money for mm. an advertisement. And I think that the more people who do like the free stuff, it's kind of like, well, if everyone's doing everything for free, it's they're not going to pay the anyone. Down. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And um, I mean, really small businesses and, and, and businesses that I want products from, I'm still open to like kind of doing that sort of stuff. Mm. 
But these days we kind of don't do anything for free. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no shame in that as well because yeah. that's what it's, you're making but, this a full-time thing. I mean, I've said this before, it is a full-time job. Yeah. Would you expect someone to go into a fast food restaurant and work on fries for five hours for free? Like Absolutely you just not. wouldn't ask it. Would mm. you ask someone to go and work in a call centre and work for 10 hours and go... So, like you're working for free it you just doesn't make sense you know so we don't need to pay you no yeah, absolutely not exactly. it doesn't work that way so mm. um that's something definitely that i have had to realize and i see a lot of people who are starting to grow on tiktok i see them uh doing the free you know shout outs for certain brands and things like that and i go you'll get to a point where you get sick of that <laughs> I mean, it's so hard to break out of that because you've built that reputation of doing these things for a non contra basis and doing it for free. It's just like, as soon as you ask for more money, you may lose that relationship. You may. And yeah. honestly, I will say though, every time I've tried that, it has worked. That's good. It has That's worked, good. but um, it is something to be very cautious of, yeah. Mm. And with your, manage, uh, with your manager team, like what sort of qualities do you really enjoy with, with the people that you work with? Well, I love getting, I need to get along with everybody and I need to have fun and I need to joke. And it obviously we need to be very serious at times, but to be honest, like you just, I, I need to be your friend at the end of the day as well. Do you know what I mean? That's what makes it work. And again, that's not for everyone. Mm. That's me. A lot of people in the industry that I know keep it very professional. You know, they don't want to have that relationship with their management. It's like strictly work. And if that's the way you want to work, absolutely. But for me, I just celebrated my birthday a few weeks ago and like some of the team came along and Aww. we were just having a fabulous night out. And it was uh, such a hoot. So I love having that kind of close relationship. Um, definitely, we still need to keep it professional. Mm -hmm. Definitely, we need to um, have people who are fo focused, we're working on things. And you know, in the in the past, there has been times where I have had to put the big boy pants on and <laughs> go, you are, you know, dropping the ball a little bit and we need to get back on track. And that's sort of now why we do those WIP meetings that I was talking about, yeah. um, which for anyone who doesn't know, WIP meeting stands for work in progress meeting. It's just a little get together that we have. We just go, right, where are we at with this one? Where are we at with this? Let's reach out to these people um, because there are sometimes brands that I want to work with and my manager can make that happen. So yeah. I go, you know, um, these people I want to work with, reach out to them for me and they can do that. Sometimes we never hear back. Sometimes we make something fabulous together and it's some of my favorite content. Mm. Um, and then there's other things as well. Like we just make sure all of my PR or all of the packages are coming so that I can create content where they're all kind of in the WIP meeting as well. And we're going, where are they at? We get the tracking numbers. Like everyone's across everything. Love it. And yeah, that's what I really love is just making sure everyone knows what's going on at all times. And you mentioned having those tough conversations sometimes where you feel like maybe people are dropping the ball, which, you know, these things happen. People are human. How do you navigate those difficult conversations when you're really trying to build friendships with the people you work with, especially with the way that you like to have that relationship? It is difficult, but I think that that is also like my personality. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just kind of like, if I've got an issue, like I'll tell you and let's sort it out and let's move past it. Don't yeah. want any beef, don't want a grudge, don't want anything mm. like that. We just like, if there's something that's not working, um, that's just who I am. I'm like, let's address it and move on. Yeah. And get back to having fun and going to the club. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of the whip meeting, going to the club afterwards. Literally. <laughs> Work on that progress of the alcohol. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, with your manager, you've had them for a very long time, mm -hmm. since 2013 or very, very early on before mm. you came to TikTok. Mm -hmm. Were they the first ones you chose or did you shop around a little bit to find the right fit for you? Well, these days I would advise everybody to shop around mm -hmm. and find the right fit. But at the time, uh, it was actually 2015, I think, but at the time I was, it was the first person who had reached out to me and said, hi, um, I want you to, I want to like manage you. Let's have a chat together. And I kind of like asked my family, I asked my friends and I was like, mm. and back then it was such a different time. Like yeah. social media was only just really coming together. And this um, person who reached out to me actually didn't manage many social media people. Um, they more kind of manage people who had just come off reality shows and right. things like that and music reality shows as well, like X Factor and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, mm, I don't know whether this person is gonna get me or not. And so I had a phone call with him 
And we kind of just clicked on the phone and I went, mm, he sounds switched on. He sounds really good. I'm going to meet him. And then we met and we went to a cafe and just had like a quick little meeting to get to know each other. And we just meshed. Like we just, it was literally, I was like, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life? Like, this is going to be amazing. And so for me personally, I did find it the first time around. The first mm -hmm. person to ask me was the right person for me. And I'm still with them today. Originally, oh. it was just them as my manager. And yep. now we have this huge team of people because we just keep growing. And so it's amazing. But at the time, um, it was just him. And we worked. Now, these days, <laughs> there are a lot of talent agencies out there. Some are absolutely amazing. But there are some out there who are quite the opposite and mm -hmm. aren't really giving people their full potential. Um, so I think that these days it's one of those shop around. If I was to today be approached by talent agencies or if I was today trying to look for someone to manage me, I would definitely look into maybe three month trials or like just a contract that you aren't quite locked into so you can change your mind if you want. Because the thing with talent agencies and managers is these people are putting a lot of time and effort into building you so they are helping you build your career so then they don't really want you to just get up and leave mm. in a few months even a year even two years after they've helped you build your career right so the contracts that you sign sometimes are very hard to get out of I've never wanted to leave mine I don't know whether that just means I'm a diamond in the rough and I've had the best <laughs> experience ever um, but there are going to be times where there are companies who just aren't pulling their weight and mm. maybe they've dropped the ball. You've tried to say something. They may have not received it well and you don't really, you're kind of stuck, right? So I just think that, and the other thing as well is if they're not willing to give you a three month trial, they don't believe in you enough. Bit of a red flag maybe. Yeah, bit of a red flag. Mm. Like if they want to like lock you down and be like, oh, we just see so much potential, like lock, lock, lock. It's kind of a disaster waiting to happen mm. because they're not listening to what you want to okay. begin with. And also, if they really, really wanted you, all I'm saying is if they really, really wanted you, they would just give you the contract and go, we'll do anything to get you on board. Like, go for it. And then those three months, really work it out. Really do everything you would normally do. Ask them to reach out to brands. Ask them to do things for you. And if they're really willing to do it, chances are, like, that's a good sign. If they go... If they're not really willing to do it or they say things like, mm, you're not really in a full contract with us, so we can't offer you that. Red flag. Mm. Red flag. Speaking of contracts, what sort of things should we look out for in a contract? Other than maybe those red flags of like, we're going to lock you in right now. You can't leave us. Um, what sort of things should we be looking for in a contract? Well, I want to stress that the... Uh, the the lock-in kind of, you know, because these contracts do run for like three to five years, mm -hmm. for me at least. Mm -hmm. So... Um, even though it's like you, you're locked in and you can't like p really leave, I definitely have got a clause in my contract where I can, um, but I have to provide evidence that, you know, they, the job that I've signed up for hasn't been done and mm. things like that. So it's, very, it's a very two-way street. You can't just like get up and leave the yeah. contract, but yeah. I'm happy with that. And I trust my agency and I trust my management enough that I'm happy to sign that. Definitely, definitely get it looked over by a lawyer. I did, and f thankfully it was all good. Um, and I've had to sign many contracts over the years. Mm. Um, it's not the first and only one you'll sign. <laughs> <It'll> be, <laughs> there'll be lots and lots, um, especially with every single brand I work with, I sign a new contract. So things need to be looked over all the time. Um, and the other thing as well is ask your management uh, for their lawyers. Because if you want, to, like, if they're not willing to give you that either, it's another, it's another red flag. But I think that um, just knowing that you're, you still own the intellectual property. Mm -hmm. So sometimes on some contracts, managers might, um, it's, it's, it's more to do with the wording. And this is why I'm like, seek um, legal advice and, and t talk to a lawyer. Get, just get a lawyer to look over it. Because the wording sometimes isn't specific enough and that's the only thing that i've encountered problems with contracts is the wording bit just ambiguous. bit ambiguous yeah. and you go oh you know this could stuff me up most of the time it's a just an easy another sentence in there to fix that up and mm. um and then it's all sorted so again if the management company is willing to just be like yeah we'll fix that up for you green flag 
And if they're like, that's the way it is, mm. red flag. Because there's no contract, I think, ever that, that where they go, no, that's the way it is. Like, sorry. Yeah, you, you can negotiate everything everything because yeah. it's it's a partnership, like you said. Like you work yeah. with your team to help build yourself and the management team mm -hmm. as well. Now we've talked a lot about getting brand deals with other companies, but what about for you as a brand? Like getting things like podcasts, and you've got a podcast, even mm -hmm. shows as well. How have your management team helped you with those sorts of opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the, I literally wouldn't have a podcast if it wasn't for my management because they kind of set that all up and made that happen. Um, and the great thing is as well is that it kind of covers everything. Like we get, we film our podcast, um, we have a beautiful backdrop for our podcast. We have all the equipment for our podcast. You know, if I was doing that by myself, be very expensive. it would be very expensive. Yeah. And they've got all the equipment um, and, you know, they do all the editing. And if I want videos edited that we film during the podcast, I can get them edited. All of those things I would have to be doing myself mm. so they can facilitate that. Drag It Out um, was another show where I put celebs in drag with a local drag queen Hannah Conda and we just had this fabulous show that we put together where um, you know I had a production manager I had a director I had someone to film everything someone to edit wow. everything you know they literally did absolutely everything for me and I just had to kind of show up look pretty and shoot the show <laughs> which and, you do very well <laughs> and, thank you and everything else was set up and done for me I didn't have to worry about it but it goes beyond that as well. Lots of in-person things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when I am shooting with brands, because we talked about brand deals, but there's other times where I'll shoot content with a brand, mm -hmm. um, you know, on location somewhere and yeah. maybe doing Vox Pops yep. or maybe um, doing those sorts of things. I can have management come with me. And, you know, if I'm, again, it's sort of the things where like if I'm on set and I'm, I'm like, I'm a bit run down, like, please, can you go and get me a Red Bull or a coffee? Like, they're happy to go and run and get that for me. And, like, mm. it's one less thing and I don't have to keep the brand waiting. Yeah. And then we've got things like premieres or um, awards nights, like walking the Arias red carpet. Like, that was one of my favourite moments ever. And my management set that up, made yeah. that happen. Um, and obviously came with me that night as well. And so like I was on the red carpet there. There's lots of movie red carpets where they come with me. And it's good as well because they take all the behind the scenes content, you know, like. And you don't have to worry about that. You have to, don't have to I, worry about me, it. I was like, I always have to think, I'm like, okay, content break, content break, content yeah. break. And I've got to think about it all the time. But with your team, yeah. they're there to help you yeah. with that. So I'm like, there's my phone. I go and walk the red <laughs> carpet. I'm posing. And they're just like shooting all the behind the scenes things for me. And then, of course, you get those really cool <laughs> after shots that you could upload as a TikTok of me yep. on the red carpet, you know, looking good. Um, but yeah, like there's just so many things that they can do for you that just help take that weight off your shoulders mm. and make it all work. If you put yourself into the position of people now who are watching this, mm -hmm. at what point do you think they should get a manager? What do you think if you're in their position now? Honestly, whenever it's it's hard because realistically, you could get a manager any like at any time at any mm. point. Um, I had this uh, a manager for two to three years, uh, and the work was was good, but it wasn't enough to be full time. So I was still working at McDonald's and walking the Arias red carpet. You know, like it's it it is like this weird balance mm. on social media where you start earning money and it's good money, but it's like not enough to really sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I had a manager back then when it wasn't a full-time thing. And now it is a full-time thing. And I guess it doesn't really matter when. Obviously, if you are, because, okay, well, here's the other thing. I have a friend who has hundreds of thousands of followers and has been in the social media game for years and she doesn't have a manager. And she does everything herself because she can and she yeah. likes that. And she wakes up every morning and goes into her office at her home and, you know, does all the emails herself and everything. Not my vibe. Mm. Not my vibe. <laughs> like, I'm like, pass that on to someone else, doll. <laughs> and you can have your commission. Whereas she's like, well, I'd rather keep the money myself and mm. I'll just do everything myself. Some people might never need a manager mm. if that's the way you want to work. You know, you might never need one. You might never want one. And that's totally fine. It doesn't mean you can't succeed in this industry without one because I know people who don't have a manager who are absolutely Still killing it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, 
But for me personally, it was definitely something that I needed and I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing and this wouldn't be my full-time w- job or it might be my full-time job, but I might not be making the money and getting oh. the opportunities, like my own podcast and my own show and walking things like Aris. that. You know, walking the Aries <laughs> red carpet. Well, you know what's funny? is like, that was back in 2017. And like that now, although it was huge at the time, I go, the Aries. It's... I've done so much more since yeah. then. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things that it's just curated to each person. You can get a manager at 20,000. You can get a manager at 10,000. You can get a manager at a million. Like, mm. it's just one of those things. And I guess this comes back to what we were talking about before is really important to shop around. Yeah. Make sure you get something that works for you. It may be having a manager, maybe not having a manager. Yeah. Mm. And also the other thing to be... Um, careful of is there are a lot of scam emails as well Mm. definitely make sure that whoever is reaching out to you is legit um feel free to reach out to people i would try and get second opinions as well like if you go onto the management company's website you will most likely see who they already manage see if you know anyone see if you know anyone just even as an acquaintance and just reach out to them maybe you don't even know them at all maybe just reach out to them i mean this industry and this my career has been all about just like going for it just like i might not even know you if i need to send you a message i'll send you a message like i'll i'll yeah do what needs to be done so I mean, what's the harm? What are they going to do? Leave you on red? Delete your message? Not reply? Who cares at the end of the day? You know, ask someone else. So get what you want. If you want it to happen, like do anything to get what you want. Absolutely. This has been a really insightful conversation. Thank you so much. I've learned a lot. I hope you guys have learned a lot as well. But before we finish up, we do actually have some audience Q&A that we'd like to ask. Mm -hmm. So what has been the best part about having a manager? Um, The best part would be the help (laughs) having the help and being able to make this my full-time career because i just don't think as i said i would be able to be full-time or if i was full-time i just wouldn't be making as much money Mm. so because they just you know instead of just it just being me it's like a team of at least five to ten people doing a whole heap of things. So And it just goes to show that you can make your passion your career. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and that's absolutely. absolutely winning in life. So <laughs> it's awesome. Um, what about merch? How does your management team help you with creating merch, thinking of merch, and actually producing merch? Because there's a lot that actually goes into making merch, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that the other thing as well is remembering that it is a two-way street. Mm-hmm. So I can't just say to my management team, hey, make some merch for me. Like, that's not how it works unless maybe you're Harry Styles or, like, I don't know whether maybe Harry Styles is, like, not looking, overlooking his merch, like, when you're that big of a celeb. But I can't just kind of say, make whatever and, like, do it for me and I'll just see. Like, it doesn't work like that. Mm. I have to go, hey, I've got this idea. This is what it's going to look like. This is what I'd like. I want a T-shirt. I want a jumper. I want a bloody pencil case. I don't care. Like, whatever it is, you have it all mapped out for them and you go... What do you think of this? Mm -hmm. And then it's collaborative. Like they go, oh, like that might be good. That might not be good. We can see what we can do. Let's take it and see. And then they might take it to a designer. They can, they've got the contacts that I wouldn't have. And so that's like the really good. um, But that's the thing. Like a management should be able to do what you'd like to do within reason. Mm -hmm. Um, And they should be able to like be willing to, you know, get at the end of the day, like, I am paying them to help me out. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's why I was like, just because their name is manager or we're talking about managers, it doesn't mean that they are the boss. Do you know what I mean? It's more of a collaborative Mm. sort of thing. So merch for me uh, was really, really easy. I just took it to my management and said, this is what I'd love to do. And they said, cool. They got in touch with the designer. They got in touch with the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. They worked out how much it would cost. Then they asked me how much I'd like to sell it for, Mm -hmm. how I wanted to do shipping, how I wanted the website to look like, all of those sorts of things. Like I was able to give my creative input on, but they kind of did the the hard yards for me in a sense. So yeah, at the end of the day, we just made a different deal and it all worked out and it looked fabulous and we sold lots of merch and it was good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us and giving us your insights on how best to find a manager, how to work with your managerial team as well in your case. I think we've got, I've certainly gotten a lot out of this session and I hope those who are watching have also gotten a lot out of it too. So it doesn't matter how many followers you have, if you have 10,000, even 1,000 possibly, like mm-hmm. up to 200,000, who cares? You get a manager when you feel like it works for you.
thank you so much for joining us. That's okay. Thanks for having me. All right. I hope you have all learned something today. I certainly have. But before we cut class, it's time for my favorite part of class. It's homework time. So what we want you to do this time is to go to the trending page and find a current trend that you like and try and replicate it in your own way. Don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag for university for us to see your wonderful videos because we love seeing them. Our favorites will be featured in the Tuesday newsletter and sent some exclusive TikTok merchandise. I've been your host, Kirsten Banks. You can find me at Astro Kirsten. And don't forget to follow All Right Hey at All Right Hey on TikTok. And we'll see you next time.